Harry's Wife, Part 79.19 Use and Abuse Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. You should know by now that in the dynamic between a narcissist and anybody else, we seek one of the prime aims, at least maybe all four. Fuel, and if you want to understand what that is, read my book Fuel. You can find that on Amazon or in the Knowledge Vault. We require control, character traits and residual benefits. We may not obtain all four from everybody that we interact with, we will always seek control, and usually fuel also. This is whether you are our spouse, a friend, a stranger, a neighbour, a colleague, a side piece, a booty call, serving us in a shop, coming round to do the plumbing. Whenever we have an interaction, or have some form of involvement with another human being, the pursuit of at least one, maybe two, maybe three, or all four of the prime aims becomes evident. In effect, we use people. And of course, if you don't give us what we want, we abuse you. For the sake of accuracy, we actually abuse you twice. We abuse you, although it doesn't feel like it, when we're pleasant to you. But this is actually abuse because we're not genuine about it. It's merely an artifice, something that's manufactured to enable you, or rather to enable us, to get what we want from you. And then, when you don't do what we want, when you threaten our control and circumstances dictate that it's appropriate, we lash out, by way of corrective devaluation when dealing with secondary or tertiary sources, and a sustained devaluation when it's a primary source. There are many things that are accurate about us, but two of the most accurate are the fact that we use and we abuse. With some of, us, some of you, we draw you in and suck everything that we can from you. We subject you to such stringent control that it crushes you. We draw as much fuel as we can until you no longer function. We absorb your character traits, stripping your personality and bolting it onto our own. We take those residual benefits, your money, your friends, your contacts, your assets, and we leave you like a dried out husk by the side of the road, disengage from you, and then move on to somebody else. Not everybody's interaction with our kind is as dramatic as that. Some people find that they get through it relatively unscathed. Indeed, they wouldn't even realise that they were involved with a narcissist. But many of the victims understand the considerable cost that comes with involvement with the narcissist. And of course, this is demonstrated in the series involving Harry's wife. You have seen the changing behaviours of Prince Harry as he succumbs to the sustained devaluation that he finds himself in as the intimate partner primary source of Harry's wife. However, there are others that have been abused. We know, for instance, of the ostracization of the other members of Harry's wife's family, her father, her half-brother, her half-sister. There are former friends that have been abused by way of being placed on the shelf and ignored. And, of course, Piers Morgan effectively has been because he and her cozied up together and then she has ignored him ever since. And we have seen his responses to that as a consequence when two narcissists collide. There is the individual who apparently had her eyes glued shut by Harry's wife whilst at university or college. And the abuse, as you know, comes in many different forms. However, this part turns to a previous spouse of Harry's wife, Trevor Engelson. He is what is known as a former intimate partner primary source. 
Should you become the intimate partner primary source, you may well keep that status to the day that you die. Or, if the narcissist disengages from you, you become the former intimate partner primary source. It might be the case that you are brought back into the relationship and become the intimate partner primary source once again. A former intimate partner primary source is always susceptible, like anybody else, to being hoovered, notwithstanding the demise of the formal relationship. Here we look at a newspaper article that appears in the Central Recorder, written by Amy Comfey, that talks about, with her post-divorce action, Harry's wife angered her ex-husband, Trevor Engelson. And, rather than it being about the dynamic between Harry's wife and Prince Harry, we take a step back in time and look at the dynamic that occurred between Harry's wife and her former husband, Trevor Engelson. The article reads as follows. Harry's wife has endeared herself as the Duchess of Sussex to her devoted followers, a.k.a. the Shuggers, learn intelligence, high in emotional outburst, and often, more often than not, completely unable to spell their heroine's name. But her journey to the royal family was a long one and came after she ended her marriage with her first husband. Harry's wife might remind some about a specific royal figure who hit the stage some decades ago and whose life was plagued by controversies and sagas. Princess Diana. No, Diana, Princess of Wales. Harry's wife would become the wife of Diana's youngest son, Prince Harry, with whom she now shares two children, and has enjoyed the limelight more than when she was just a movie star allows the assertion of control, the receipt of fuel, facade management, which is a residual benefit. Harry's wife marriage, the article explains, to Harry has so far received mixed reviews. The 40-year-old <clears throat> and her husband have found themselves amid controversies and various accusations since they first moved to step down from their roles in the royal family. This year, the rivalry in the royal family escalated after Harry and Harry's wife granted an interview with Oprah Winfrey where they aired the dirty laundry of the famed royal family. The claims made in the interview did more damage to the reputation of the British monarchy than anything else had done within the last two decades, and Harry's wife was the face every finger pointed out. Long before these dramas unfolded, before she became a mum or held the title of a duchess, Harry's wife was just a young actress hoping to get by with a supportive boyfriend by her side. Her marriage with Prince Harry might have made her a global figure, but the father of two was not her first love, and neither was the first man to walk her down the aisle. In 2004, Harry's wife was a young actress, still trying to find the role that would launch her to stardom, and while the fortune was yet to come, she met and fell for Trevor Engelson, a movie producer in a bar in Hollywood. Bars are hunting grounds for somatic narcissists, which is the cadre of Harry's wife, and although she may well believe that she fell in love with him as a narcissist, she's incapable of that because of the absence of emotional empathy. Her narcissism compels her to believe that she's in love with him and makes her feel a sensation that she understands his love. It's actually infatuation because that is what drives her to then be motivated to assert control over him, draw fuel, gain character traits and residual benefits. He clearly fitted the bill, as her narcissism identified, to be ensnared, to cater to the prime aims, and thus she was motivated by the infatuation that her narcissism created and the belief that she was in love with him to ensnare him and become married. Engelson reportedly helped her secure a small role in the Robert Patterson movie Remember Me, Residual Benefit. The duo started dating in 2004, and after six years together, the producer popped the question to Harry's wife in 2010. After this, the couple walked down the aisle, but their marriage ended as quickly as it began. While Harry's wife was in Toronto filming her hit <coughs> series, Suits, Engelson remained in Los Angeles, and the duo spent little time together. Harry's wife and Trevor Engelson found that their passion soon faded and Harry's wife took the big step that angered Engelson. Just as her career was taking a good turn, Harry's wife filed for divorce in 2013, citing irreconcilable differences. She disengaged from him, and 
that was because one of the five disengagement triggers occurred. And if you'd like to understand more about that, then just listen to my video, Five Reasons Why the Narcissist Leaves You. At this juncture, disengagement occurred. He served no immediate purpose, and therefore she jettisoned him. According to author Andrew Morton, everything was part of a big plan hatched by Harry's wife. According to reports, rather than returning to the Los Angeles home they shared and ended things respectfully and amicably, Harry's wife chose to do things the hard way. Or rather, her narcissism caused her to behave in this fashion because she has no emotional empathy for him. What many people fail to understand is that whilst not every divorce involves a narcissist, every bitter and nasty divorce will do. Why? Well, there are couples that divorce where no narcissist is involved, but they are in the minority. And those are the ones which are more likely to be resolved amicably, amicably rather, because both parties have emotional empathy and don't have a need for control. Whereas, the relationships that are more likely to end are ones which involve a narcissist, and therefore, those are the ones where there's marriage, are more likely to end in divorce, which means that you have narcissists entering the system or the process involving divorce, and because of our need for control, fuel, character traits and residual benefits, because we see what you do as a threat to our control, those are the divorces that become particularly nasty. If you want to understand more about this phenomenon, which will give you a massive jump forward in understanding, listen to my video, Why Divorce is So Hard. That should actually be mandatory listening to for not only those who are in relationships, but everybody that practices within the system that revolves around divorce. Lawyers, judges, those that are involved in the preparation of reports in divorce proceedings involving children, CAFCAS in the United Kingdom, child psychologists, relevant social workers, and so forth. Returning to the article, Harry's wife mailed the producer his diamond engagement ring and wedding ring, malign hoover designed to assert control and provoke. Engelson was still recovering from the shock of Harry's wife's request for a divorce when he was shocked further by the returned rings, absence of emotional empathy. His pain was only aggravated with the thoughts that Harry's wife dumped him after he had helped her career soar. Absence of emotional empathy, disengagement trigger occurring, he served no further purpose, therefore get rid. However, the returned rings were not the first time Engelson has had to put up with his ex-wife's bold moves that some might consider callous. Before she moved to Canada to begin shooting suits, Harry's wife took their expensive food mixer, asset appropriation, assertion of control, sense of entitlement, which many saw as a statement of intent and newly found independence. That might be how people interpret it, but actually it's asset appropriation, a sense of entitlement, lack of boundary recognition, and absence of emotional empathy. Harry's wife was allegedly trying to prove that with the luxury and independence her career now afforded her, she no longer had to depend on Engelson's connections, as she now had a steady source of income, as well as Hollywood connections. Indeed, he having served his purpose meant that she jettisoned him, and because she had effectively drained him of the things that she needed, and therefore she would look at alternative prospects, the absence of emotional empathy meant she no longer continued to remain in a relationship with him. The article explains, Moving her favourite kitchen item from their Los Angeles home was Harry's wife of noting that the bungalow house she'd shared with Engelson was no longer her home as she'd become a woman that could support herself. Although she likes to think that, subsequent behaviours demonstrate that not to be the case. Her ex-husband, Engelson, noted that Harry's wife's actions left him very angry, undeniably so, the status, of course, of any victim treated in such a manner. And the article explains that he felt like a rag under her shoes. Author Morton believes Harry's wife is more of a calculated character rather than the harmless sweet soul she portrays herself to be. Well, Morton is right to an extent that she's not the harmless sweet soul she portrays herself to be, but she's not a calculating character. Yes, she will make a decision as, I want to have a relationship with this person, so I'm going to wear perfume that his mother wore, but that was guided by the instant, by her narcissism. Yes, she may well have decided, I want to marry a prince, and that was the long-term aim. 
But as I've repeatedly explained and repeatedly demonstrated with cogent and concrete examples, her narcissism operates in the moment. That's why she makes so many schoolgirl errors. That's why there are so many problems of collateral consequence. She is not a narcissist that habitually calculates. She is one that operates through instinct and in the moment. And it is people's lack of understanding that cause them to believe that she is calculating it all. Believe me, as somebody who knows my own kind, she isn't. She hasn't got it about her to be that way. Mr. Morton, of course, doesn't understand precisely what she is. Morton explained that Harry's wife had always harboured an ambition to become a princess like Diana and hoped her fortune would take her there since she was a teen. He believes that as her career grew, so did her social status. Harry's wife shut the door on those who had known her in her days of obscurity, including her parents and half-siblings. Placing non-intimate secondary sources on the shelf, absence of emotional empathy, haughty behaviours, lack of accountability... Before the end of their marriage in 2013, Harry's wife in Engelson had often fought over his refusal to help her get good-paying jobs, rather than the low-paying job she got that sometimes looked demeaning. Argumentativeness, threat to control, response through assertion of control by argument, arguing. After getting her role in suits, Harry's wife had to move to Canada for nine months, and in a bid to keep them nearby, Engelson moved his office to New York, which was an hour away by flight, but things had grown cold for them by then. The response of an empathic person trying to accommodate the changes in order to keep the relationship alive. Harry's wife is a professed perfectionist, assertion of control, and she had grown tired of the scattered life of her then husband, such as arriving late for meetings in rumpled clothes, and at this time she was getting used to an independent life. Him turning up late and in rumpled clothes would be a threat to control. It would make her look bad, therefore it threatened her control. Five years after their divorce... Engelson could barely contain his anger over the treatment he got from his estranged wife. Since their divorce, Harry's wife's social status has risen tremendously, and she has gone on to become a celebrity herself, much more than she was with her producer husband. Although this is a brief piece, talking about her behaviours with regard to Engelson, it provides you with a neat look at some aspects of the narcissistic dynamic, and it also, of course, reinforces that behaviour, whereby the narcissist is only involved with somebody for the prime aims. Most narcissists don't know this because they are unaware. They, of course, might think that they are involved with somebody because they want their money, but they don't understand that they're doing all of this for control, fuel, character traits, and residual benefits. Indeed, in some instances, although it might be obvious to somebody that that person is with another person purely for the money, they don't see it themselves because their narcissism doesn't allow them to think that way. The narcissism causes them to believe that they truly love that individual. And, although it's transparently obvious to other people what's going on, the narcissist doesn't see it that way because the narcissism won't allow them to do so. Accordingly, this provides us in this article with an opportunity to further understand the behaviours that have occurred in a previous relationship of Harry's wife. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.